Righto, we've uh, got a couple of nights off work, so we've decided to go for another meat run. Yeah, I've got my good mate, Huckleberry Finn, with me. And uh, he's been telling me for years, you can't leave the hut behind them. It's the best bit of the deer. So the pressure's on hut. Today we've got to kill a deer without wrecking the heart. And we're going to eat it. So, anyway, we're back in the spot that we smacked that hind a month ago. Trees on the track. No one's been in here. So, anyway, we've got a perfect morning. We've got sign all over the joint. So we should be right to get a few deer. See a few deer and get one on the ground, hopefully. So, anyway, stick with us. Trial on a few hats. Um, pretty good quality. I'm pretty happy with them. So, probably going to do a big order and put them up for sale there, support the channel. Anyway. How was that for a hunt? <laughs> Be happy before breakfast. <laughs> I reckon we've gone. Like literally hunting wise, we've gone 10 minutes, if that. Yeah. So I've just smoked a nice yearling. I'm hoping I've hit it high enough. <laughs> <laughs> if not, it's gonna be uh, eye fillets and base wraps. But uh, we've got a big blood trail here already. And uh, yeah, hunt's over. Yeah. <laughs> now the fun begins. <laughs> Let's have a look at the, this blood trail from a 200 grain ELDX out of my wind mag. Yeah, it ain't going far. Ran that way too. Bit of blood there. There we go, boys and girls. It's a lot smaller than I was thinking. <laughs> nice eating size, though. Well, believe it or not, it's probably been less than an hour since we left the car. Got that deer all butchered up. Got all the bits that we wanted. I shot it just far enough back, believe it or not. Um, so I missed the heart. So lunchtime's gonna be a tasty little treat. And uh, it's got a big bag of meat here. It wasn't a very big deer, but choice uh, cuts off it. And got the ribs, heart, and back straps, eye fillets. Front legs were gone. Um, and um, yeah, so we're gonna stash the meat in the tree down here and we're gonna continue hunting for huck because uh, we're just not gonna get a chance to hunt for the rest of the year, really. So, we're gonna make the most of the effort we've done, made to get in here and see if we can find a stag. There's a bit of stag sign back there, so we can be selective now. Anyway, mission accomplished. Sometimes it comes easy. 
And uh, if you're one of those people that haven't had success yet, don't get discouraged that I walk 10 minutes in the bush and shoot a deer. A lot of the problem with people that are starting out is they're hunting in the wrong spots. And I get a lot of requests for videos on show us, show you how to go about finding a good spot to go hunting. I've been scratching my head trying to work out how it is I go about it. And the simple truth to it all is about 25 years of trial and error. So I've got a portfolio of spots I can go and I know roughly where the deer will be, just like this spot. So we've managed two deer out of here in two trips this year. And that's because I know the way the land rolls, the way the air wants to move, and where the deer want to live in here. So that gets me on them. So if you're a beginner and you're smashing around the bush, you're not finding deer sign, you're in the wrong spot to start with. Don't be too worried about hunting straight up. If you're just starting out and you're looking for a spot, do some miles. Leap. Go light. Walk to flats, walk to ridges. See if there's actually a mob of deer in there first. Once you've worked out that there's deer there and that there's some particular nice gullies, because there's always going to be scrubby ones where you're not going to get a, not even going to waste your time going in there. Once you work out that, find those good spots where the deer want to be, then you can go hunting. So do the leg, leg work first. I've done plenty of leg work in the last 25 years. Trust me, I've found plenty of spots where there's no deer. Well, Huckleberry's caught up, so we'll sneak around this corner. I haven't been around this way for years, so I'm not 100% sure what we're going to run into. So we just put up those deer. They didn't tear off like they were right onto us. I think they just heard us and have moved off. So we're going to do a traditional track up job. Just see if we can get back onto that stag. And um, yeah, it's been raining so it's nice and quiet. And um, yeah, he looked pretty cool. He was jet black black antlers. Couldn't really get a good look at what sort of style he had, but anyway, it'd be a good one. Good one to get anyway. Been letting out a few calls on the on the deer caller. Just to maybe calm them down and confuse them a little bit. And then we'll, I'm on their tracks now, we'll I'll we'll just do a real careful job of following them up further. As long as we can, actually. So We've been tracking that stag for maybe 10 minutes. Or tracking the deer. There was six deer together. And um, I said, 
I just need to slow down here. It's a good spot for him to pull up and wait for us. Because it's a, a thing they do. If they get bumped and they don't really know what you are, they'll jump over through a gully up, up a ridge, get in a bit of thick stuff, and they'll sit there and wait for you. Because they want to know what you are. Anyway, we've come along through here, had marks on the pad, and uh, I just noticed a set of marks going up, and the other marks were going along. I, went, I sort of thought to myself, in hindsight, more than anything, I wonder if that's him. And I reckon I went 10 yards up this pad. I heard a little noise. I looked up, and there's antlers coming through the scrub. I sort of motioned to Huck, who was below me. I just ran my thumb in me in the ears and moved off to the side so we could shoot. He's pulled up, he's turned and looked at us. Huck's had a shot. He's called it as a pull. He's called it. I'm really hoping that he pulled it the right way. But we did just hear a bit of a crash before. I'm hoping that was him going over. You've got to practice your shooting. If you don't practice, you got that happens. So if you didn't hear that, Huck's saying, you need to practice. Huck's a bit rusty. I got it. I don't know. It was only 50 metre shot. <laughs> 50 metre shot. 25, 30 degrees uphill. We'll see. We'll see. We're a bit dejected. We've uh, confirmed a clean miss, which is a good thing. But we'd rather have had the deer. And uh, anyway, we've... we've it took a bit to uh, get to that conclusion. We didn't realise all the deer were there, so we ended up tracking the wrong one at the start. We tracked another one, which I think was him, and um, yeah, and then we tracked another one just to confirm, but its foot wasn't big enough to be that stag. So yeah, a bit of a bummer, but he called it straight away, and it's pretty much you you know when you. Pulled off a good shot, and um, yeah, anyway, so we're just going to go and find a spot for lunch, and uh, a bit of a cry about it, and uh, then we'll get over it, and then we'll go for a bit of a hunt on the way back to the car, and you never know, might find another one. Ages Huck's been telling me you can't leave the heart behind in the deer, it's the best bit. So today he's going to convince me that that's true. And the other thing that I'm going to have a crack at is making a bone marrow, not a sauce, but bone marrow. So I've got the, um, the thighs out of that little hind that I shot this morning. So chuck them on the fire and cook them up. And then uh, we're going to spread that on the uh, eye fillets. So, let's have a look. Just got to get them cooking. I don't know how long it's going to take, but yeah, I suppose when they're all burnt on the outside, they're going to be cooked on the inside. You only got to warm up the marrow, really, don't you? So, I'll let you know how it tastes. So, this is the heart. So what have you done there, Huck? You've just sort of split it open. Split and it open so you can get to the insides, and you've got to try and get all these hard sort of... Trim out the... Heart strings. Heart strings. you can call it. Yeah, I don't know. You've got a little bit. <clears throat> yeah. There you go. Not very often that I carry fry pan when I'm hunting, <laughs> but... So we've got heart, salt and pepper, all mixed in together there, salt the butter and the fire. What more do we need? Again. Yep. 
to the sort of stir. Should have brought tongs with me. <laughs> Next time, eh? We need, we need to get some titanium tongs. So what's the secret? Not not very long? Oh no, you can keep cooking for a fair while, yeah. Oh, great, it doesn't really matter. I like to cook the shit out a little bit. Yeah. Just to make sure that you any bad things in there which should be pretty safe that it's um they're gone. Yeah. It was very healthy deer. Yeah. Very big heart for a very small deer. That's why I shot it. <laughs> Meanwhile, here we go. Mm -mm. That is very nice. It's very salty. Yeah, it's not salt. No. Very good. Very good. Bellissimo. Let's just say it's way better than the tongue. <laughs> You know, that's worth the effort. Yep, I'm a convert. Hey, good day. <laughs> it's delicious. It's got a really good texture. Mm -hmm. <sighs> what I'm going to do... Oh, there's a little stick to it. Yeah, Mm -mm. Just going to put a bit of colour on it and then I'm going to wrap it in tinfoil and chuck it with coals. That's it. Pretty good for only being dead for a couple of hours. Don't mind the old Definitely got a bit of flavour to it. Main bone marrow. Probably should have saved a bit of that salt and pepper for it, but yeah. there'd probably be a little bit from out of the pan and from the heart, but give it a go. We'll be making the effort to get the heart out. Next time, as long as I don't blow it away, like I nearly did this time. <laughs> but, awesome.
have a go yourself. It's worth the effort. So anyway, we're going to put our sneak on and go a little bit lower and uh, sneak our way back to that uh, meat bag and go back to the vehicle and sneak on home. But you never know what we'll find going back. It's got a bit warmer now, so I have to keep our eye open for our wriggle sticks. A little bit of fun. I <sighs> and her yielding at a calf. I saw the little calf first. And then I squeaked and squeaked and squeaked and I could tell the way it was looking. Mum was coming back. She came into about 10 or 12 feet. I had her stamp in her foot and she was making a bit of a... Bit of a and giving that a bit of a thr thrashing in there. Right, I've just come back on your meat. Been gone a couple of hours. Have a look at the maggots. Holy Jesus. Look at them all. Anyway, that's why you keep it in the game bag. Otherwise they'd be all over it. Alright. Um, boots are awesome. And I'm not just saying that. These are a quality pair of boots. Yep, there's other brands of boots out there, but lower at the top. 
um, and this uh, model, so the Elite Evo, uh, well worth checking out. Um, I thought they were going to be a bit too soft for my kind of hunting, but my feet feel mint. I've been in them all day. Um, it's been wet all day and they haven't haven't uh, leaked or anything, so stoked with them. Uh, the hats, <laughs> wrap with the hats, good quality hats. Got my own little logo going on. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna get a few of these on order and um, yeah, I'll make them available. And the other thing that we were running today for the first time was the Macmillan stock. What a dream, really balances well in the hand and throw it up, bang. Like, I didn't have any um, hesitation shooting that high in a, in a close range. Everything felt natural straight up, so pretty stoked with that. So I'll do a bit better review on that later on once it's been around the traps a bit and got a good handle on what it's capable of. Anyway, I get requests fairly regular for me to take people out. And I've nearly always just said no. You know, I work full time, I hunt for fun. Make the videos for fun. But, you know, starting to think that people keep asking, I might have to look at it. So, let me know in the comments. If I had a service where you can book me and I'll take you on a hunt, would you do it? Would you pay? And what I'm thinking is maybe going along the lines of also offering a hunter education type of a course, keep it to a small group, you know, a ute load, so three other blokes and me, and spending a weekend in the bush just learning the basics of deer hunting. Now, obviously there's people out there that know how to track a deer, or how to read the sign, so that mightn't suit you, but maybe a guided type of a hunt would, because you're not being successful on your own, or you're a total novice, and you don't even know which way the deer marks to telling you the deer's going so I think I can help people out in both camps there <clears throat> definitely the novice I think a weekend with me could uh, just um, propel you a lot quicker than learning on your own and it might be just what you need that little bit of a push a little bit of guidance to give you the confidence to work yourself in the into the bush and that might be a good thing. But I was also thinking about maybe doing like an adventure style hunt where I take people on backpacks. Obviously the fitter you are, the more extreme we can go. But if you're a middle-aged man that's got a bit of a beer belly, you're not too fit. I've also got areas where oh, we can punch in for a couple of hours on some easy river flats. This is going to happen next year if it happens, if I get enough interest. So, yeah, if you're interested in something along the lines of that, I think I've got the ability to accelerate your learning. If that's something that you're interested in, let me know in the comments. Um, all the hunts will be State Forest or National Park. There won't be any farm fringe hunting here. I'm not interested in it. I only like hunting forest deer. Um, I think I've got the skills that I can accelerate your learning. I can get you in the bush more confidently. I can uh, help you speed up your learning process anyway. With the backpacking side of things, I've got enough gear to supply two or maybe three other blokes. So no gear will be necessary as far as camping gear, hiking gear. Um, solid boots is what you want. So don't show up in your blue steel boots, mate. Because uh, this kind of hunting is hard on your feet. So. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this one. Try to show you a few little different things. Um, yeah, so 
if you've been watching, if you like what you see, do me a huge favor and hit that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you a cent. What it does for me is it gives me a number that I can throw at some companies and say, hey, I got this many people interested in what I do and uh, they'd be very interested in any product that I want to pursue and promote. So hit that subscribe button. Like I said, it costs you nothing. All it does is makes it a bit easier for you to find me next time. If you hit the notification button, as soon as I post up a new video, you'll get a little ding ding, a little notification on your phone. It'll say, Zebra Steamer Hunt Adventures has just uploaded a new video. So you don't have to worry about scrolling through and looking for me. It'll be right on me. So, once again, thanks again. Give me a thumbs up, make a comment. I'll read them all, I'll try to answer them all. If I don't so, that's it for today. Catch up with Huck and get out of here.